The SAT considers exponential equations to just be inherently harder than a lot of other things you're going to see, like lines and quadratics. So even something as basic as this, they're kind of going to label as a medium difficulty question. But if we know the formula, we don't even need to show any work here. Let's just read the story. Um, there were no jackrabbits in Australia before 1788 when 24 jackrabbits were introduced. By 1920, the population of jackrabbits had reached 10 billion. If the population had grown exponentially, this would correspond to a 16.2% increase on average in the population each year. Which of the following functions best models the population of jackrabbits two years after 1788? So uh, two, just like with most kinds of equations, like lines, we have a, a slope and a y-intercept. With exponentials, we have a y-intercept. And then it's not technically a slope, but that that increase rate is kind of behaving like a slope. So um, let's start with the y-intercept because that's usually the easiest thing. That's the zero point, right? Since 1788 is kind of like our year zero and there are 24, that's our starting point. Now, the way that exponentials behave in most cases, the y-intercept is just the number outside of the parentheses before the exponent. So that would be kind of corresponding to this number here. But you can see that's not the 24 in choice A, right? So that gets rid of A. Uh, B is right. That's in the right spot. C is in the right spot. D, there's no reason to put it in the exponent itself. So there you go. Now, we can very easily demonstrate why this works. If you put zero in for T, right, that's what this is basically telling us. Remember, anything raised to the one power is, or anything raised to the zero power is going to be one. So that means that if we put a zero in, that no matter what these exponent things look like, uh, both of these would produce a one, right? 1.162 1 to the zero is one, and then one times 24 is 24. In choice B, 1.162 1 times zero is zero, and then two to the zero is one, and so 24 times one is 24. So uh, you should know that. This is basics of how exponents behave, uh, the zero and one properties, as well as just the basics of how exponential functions behave. Then we have to worry about this 16.2%. That's our change rate. And I think most of you are probably going to just naturally put it is in C because that's what we have. This is basically our open formula we use for percentages. It's O, 1, plus or minus P to the T is equal to N, right? So the N is that part there. And then the O, that's our original, our Y-intercept. And then that's why it's a 1.162 and not just 0.162, right? That percentage gets converted to a decimal by moving the decimal point two spots. So that's 0 0.162 as a decimal, but it's an increase. And so we have a one plus that, and that's why that one right there gets, gets shown up into the equation. Uh, there's no reason for the two. I don't know why anyone would even want to put it to here. There's nothing saying it's doubling or anything like that. But yeah, um, th there's no, that's just not where it goes. Basically, the percentage doesn't go in the exponential part itself up here. It just, it's the base of the exponent. And then what's happening is uh, we are taking a percentage like we would with a normal version of the open formula for percents. But an exponential is taking that percent continuously, right? It's doing it every year, every month, every whatever. And that is why we tack a little exponent on the top to represent the, the repetition that that, um, that percentage kind of goes through. Uh, so important to know, uh, like I said, this is something that just by reading it and with a little bit of experience, you should be able to get right confidently and quickly. You really don't want to be nervous about something like this, but they do get harder. So there will be times when we want to use the scratch paper, but this is basically like the equivalent of you know, finding a line by if you're given the slope of the y-intercept, you should be able to make a y equals mx plus b equation. It's kind of the same thing, but it's an exponential.